Hi and welcome to another old steam powered machine shop. This one's from my winter hideout in Florida. And uh, the weather here is pretty nice and I understand that you've had a lot of problems this year with up north with flooding and extra amount of snow and it's been a tough winter all the way around. But uh, we're getting a few things done and I hope I hope you guys can get out of your shop and get some things done too. Uh, on this video, I'm picking up where I left off last year with this Pickering Governor. And I've been messing around with this thing for two years now and haven't, <laughs> haven't got it done. And I really got to get it done now because I'm uh, really going pretty good on the Lively engine up in the New York shop and I'm going to need it for that. So, you can pick this up where it left off on video number 63, where we uh, re-poured the main bearing here, made a new shaft, made a shaft here that's tapered, and uh, a few other things. So now the task at hand is to uh, uh, drill and ream all the holes for the tapered pins that these arms fit on and uh, this has to be reamed out. I didn't have a 5 8 expansion reamer at the time. I, I brought one with me so I've got it now so that will be fitted to this shaft which is a little bit bigger than the original shaft was by several thousands. Uh, this is this is on dimension uh, uh, cold rolled steel. Uh, so and also, I had brought some parts with me from the Lively engine to uh, clean up and, you know, just machine some machine the surfaces to kind of clean them up and make them look good. Uh, one thing I want to talk about a little bit and mention is if you guys are in the market for an electric motor for a lathe or something, but this little axle lathe I, I rebuilt it a couple years ago and I needed a motor for it. So instead of just going out and buying a Harbor Freight motor, I thought, eh, I'm gonna, I want something a little better. So I paid the extra money and I bought a motor, uh, I believe it's a one half horse motor from Granger. And guess what? It's the same stuff. This motor hung so bad that the vibration is transferred through the belt, you can feel it in the machine, and I believe it even affects the surface finish on it. So beware of electric motors. I don't know where you get a decent motor these days. Uh, I would rather pick one up at a uh, flea market or something and send it to a motor shop and have it gone through than buy a new motor these days. Well, thanks again for watching. Thanks for all the comments, and I read them all and try to uh, reply to them. And uh, thanks for all the likes and uh, subscriptions, too. We'll get right to work here. We're just cleaning up a few parts for the Lily engine that's uh, being rebuilt up north this summer. <clears throat> this is the packing gland nut for the valve rod and uh, it cleaned up pretty good. The piston rod however has been really beat up from years of lame brain maintenance with pipe wrenches and chisels and everything else. Can't imagine how it, anybody operating an engine like that would just grab a pipe wrench and tighten up a brass beautiful brass finish uh, fitting like this but they did so I got it indicated in here as best I can there's really nothing to indicate to and I'm going to just take some light uh, cosmetic cuts here clean it up
got it spinning. I don't like the way it's lined up. I'm going to get in here with something and see if I can get on this surface here and get it centered a little better. One thing that didn't get done last year where we left off was the uh, shaft here was a few thousandths bigger than the bushings on each end of the governor. So <clears throat> I didn't have the right kind of reamer and I uh, brought one down with me and it's a 5 8 expansion reamer. Now these reamers work pretty well for uh, fitting close fitting things that have to have a sliding or running fit and I don't think you can even buy these anymore the, the ones you get are adjustable reamers of this style and they have grooves cut in the threaded part that are tapered smaller on this end and, and shallower on this end and these blades move back and forth with these stop nuts so you have to back off on one and tighten the other and I don't think they work as well. Uh, they kind of tend to hog in on soft material like Babbitt or bronze. Uh, I mean they work but I think these work better and you can find them in flea markets and, and things. They've probably been abused tremendously but they're hollow and uh, they're slotted every other uh, flute is slotted here and then it's got a tapered screw it screws down in here and when you tighten up on it it kind of bulges this out just a, a thousandth or two and they're nominally uh, uh, numbered this is uh, 5 8 less minus 1000 so that typically would probably be what you'd get if you just touch the screw into there well I'm gonna just tighten it up just a little bit and go through this governor and get a nice fit on the shaft. Probably one of the reasons that uh, it was uh, a little undersized is that typically in the old days they their stock, their wrought iron stock was uh, undersized anyway. So now that we've got a actual cold rolled modern piece of steel in here. It's going to be a little tight. So you can do it by hand. Just shaving off a couple thousands.
just a little tight. This is a little bit of a tricky fitment on the Pickering Governor in that uh, in order to control the end play in the shaft, <clears throat> the shaft actually bears, the end of the shaft actually bears against this cast housing here to control the direction in uh, the end play in this direction. The end play in that direction is controlled by shim washers between the gear and the housing here and you have to end up with the gear position just right so that you have the right amount of uh, backlash in the bevel gear. When you get that just right, you uh, drill this hole through the shaft and ream it for a tapered pin. So that holds everything uh, in correct uh, relationship to each other. This shaft has got to be drilled for a tapered pin to match these tapered holes that were already here. This is one of the old pins. <clears throat> no matter how long these tapered pins are, the big end is always the same for a given group of them. This one measures 156 on the big end oh, this is a ICS machine shop handbook 1924 by the International Textbook Company in Scranton, Pennsylvania <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, these are the pin sizes. They go from 0 to 10, and on the big ends, they go from uh, 156 thousandths to 706. And the lengths over here go from 1 inch to 6 inch. So this is the lo length of the longest pin of this size. So there will be a whole bunch of different length pins for each one of these numbers. <clears throat> So this one having a 156 big end, it's going to be a number zero taper pin. So that's the number of the reamer that you use, a number zero. The small end of this pin is about 135 <clears throat> along the taper. This is a 15 16th long pin. So that makes it about 135 on the small end, which is about a number 29 number drill. So I'll drill the hole with a 29 drill.
This bit is also a zero pin. It's just longer. It's the same top diameter, same taper. It just continues on longer for a longer job. And both of them fit in the hole I just drilled up to the point where they need to be start to taper. So the tape We'll ream it with a tapered reamer. This is a spiraled reamer. Don't even bother with the straight reamers. They do a lousy job and they get they stick and you might break it. If you have to buy one of these, make sure you get a spiraled one. And that will ream that out by hand right now. That'll leave enough for driving fit. <clears throat> Final thing to do is to run the reamer through the part and the shaft to finish sizing it and make sure everything lines up right. And that the pin goes in far enough. That should do it. Drilling the main shaft, I got a nice new zero tapered pin all ready to go.
try it with one washer. This main rod that runs down through the middle is threaded on one end. Actually, it's threaded on both ends. I don't know why. <clears throat> this thread is pretty loose fit in the part that it goes in. And I'm going to make another one. But the thread is quarter inch. 24 thread per inch, not 28 like fine, not 20 like coarse, but 24. Got no die, so I'm going to do it on the little lathe. So I got out the Atlas thread chart, which tells me I need. A 48 to a 64 to a 32 to a 64 to a 32 and that should give me 24 threads per inch. I just scratched it and I'm checking it with my thread gauge and it looks like it's right on 24 threads per inch. This threading tool is a disc type that you just keep grinding the top of it and keep turning it as it wears so you got all of this wear area. Uh, basically you have enough thread tool bit to last you for the rest of your life. Okay, we're set to go with the thread job here. Now uh, the, the uh, dial gauge on this little lathe is a two inch dial, which means the carriage moves two inches per revolution instead of four inches like on most lathes. So this being an even numbered thread at 24, uh, you can engage on any number that's numbered one and two, or any line in between one or the other. Whoops, here's my phone. with that other 
threading tool. It was just too big and clunky and it was hitting the uh, center and so I switched over to my regular old hand ground thread tool in a uh, Armstrong tool holder. Well, final assembly doesn't amount to a whole lot. This uh, the shaft here drops down into this socket. It's not pinned or threaded or anything because it just pushes down. And this has got two feather keys that go into grooves here on this hollow shaft. It keeps it from turning. So the governor turns, but this doesn't turn. That allows you to adjust it with this knob. This knob stands still. The governor turns. So there's a couple of hardened thrust washers Go on here. And the nut. I'll tighten that up with a press bridge. And the knob goes on. So that's the speed adjustment. And also this is affects the speed too. This, this is quite a bit different than the other governor that I uh, rebuilt. Uh, that had the uh, arm out here with the idler and the automatic shutoff. It had a ratchet to wound up the spring. This has got a pretty neat little worm gear drive here to affect the speed. When you get it where you want it, you tighten down this wing nut on the other side. So when I get it up north, I still got to make a gasket for it here. And, uh, few other little things, but it's pretty much done. I think eventually I'll find a better pulley. A picker and pulley with one flange on it. This pulley has really been through the mill. But it's uh, going to be fine until uh, I get ready to put it on the engine. You know, working on this tiny stuff really makes me nervous. So I got a little extra sidebar here for you today, and it's not necessarily to get my channel ratings up, but it's something I thought you might enjoy looking at. And it has to do with my second set of wheels down here. This is something that I built 37 years ago and I've had a lot of fun with it and it's pretty much my second vehicle in Florida. It's, uh, I'm going to put it outside in the driveway so you can see it a little bit better in the sunlight.
Now the cab is a 33 Ford pickup. It was a uh, coal truck and when I got the cab there was nothing from the middle of the doors down. It was an absolute rusted out disaster. The pickup bed is a Model A. I'm not sure what vintage. It was made into a utility trailer. Upside down, beat up in a gravel pit. I brought that home. Cut the best side in two and made half a box out of it. Sort of reminiscent of the fad T days. The rear end is a uh, 67 Cooler. 9-inch Ford. The engine is a 1964 Buick Electra, 401 cubic inches with its transmission with a Riviera 2-4 barrel setup on it. Edelbrock carbs. Front axle's 32 Ford dropped I-beam. The frame, the complete frame is fabricated. All of the suspension components except for a few things are fabricated. Brakes are uh, like Nova uh, Chevy 2 discs. It's starting to show its age. But it's been around the block. I like the uh, kick out windshield that was a feature of all, all the Ford cars up until the later 30s. It's uh, kind of nice when the weather's hot and you don't have any air conditioning. The steering column is Camaro. Uh, the steering box is a Mustang. Seats are Volkswagen Jetta. Shifter is Chevette. Well, I've had a lot of fun with it. It uh, it's surprisingly quick. It'll run in the 12s with street tires. Hope you enjoyed looking at it. Well, thanks for watching this episode. We got the uh, governor for the Lively engine pretty much together. Hope to be in the New York shop May 1st. Uh, thanks for your support and all your comments. And uh, I hope you can get out in your shop and do something. So far this year it's shaped up to be pretty crummy. But uh, we'll persevere. Thanks again. See you next time.